So the log of x when we graph it. Um, interesting kind of graph here. It doesn't look like any of our polynomials. So remember what our exponential looked like last week. Uh, it was completely above the x-axis, and it was either increasing or it was decreasing. If you notice this, let's adjust the window so we can see things a little bit better. I don't see anything over here when we have a negative x. Um, and I think we talked about that last week, that we can't take the log of a negative number. So we don't need negative 10 to be our x minimum. Let's make it like negative 1, just so that we can still see the y-axis there. Um, and then let's change our y minimum to negative 5 and our y maximum to positive 5, just because we didn't really see too much of the graph there. All right, so now we can see a little bit more detail. Uh, it appears that the log just kind of shows up out of nowhere here. That's not really the case. Um, the closer we get to the y-axis, uh, the steeper this graph gets. It gets super, super, super close to the y-axis. Um, so it turns out that the domain is that your x values have to be greater than 0. Okay, we cannot take the log of a negative number, and for that case, we can't take the log of zero. Um, so that's what it looks like, or in interval notation, it would be from zero to infinity. Our range, remember with the exponential functions, the range was restricted. Our, our y values didn't go below the x-axis. Well, that's not the case for logarithms. This end of the function, even though it looks like it disappears, it does continue down here. Uh, it's going down towards negative infinity. And then this side over here on the right side, it's going to continue to increase. Very slowly, but it does continue to increase. So our range for a logarithmic function is all real numbers, or negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, let's talk about the intercepts. When we're looking at the graph here, it does not cross the y-axis. So there is no y-intercept. However, it does cross the x-axis. Let's see where that happens. Let's look at the table, see if it happens on a whole number. It does. It happens at 1. If you recall, the y-intercept of the exponential function was 0, 1. That's an interesting connection there. Uh, this function is always increasing. And when you're analyzing increasing and decreasing, remember that you move from left to right. So as we look at this function, moving from the left side of the graph to the right side of the graph, the y values are increasing. Okay? We don't have any extrema because extrema occur, maximums and minimums occur when there's a change from increasing to decreasing. There's no change here, so we don't have any extrema, maximums or minimums. This function actually has a vertical asymptote. Remember we talked about those with rational functions. It's that vertical line that you never touch. Well, this one has one as well. That's that vertical line at x equals zero because it never touches the y-axis. Uh, it does have a vertical asymptote there. So let's talk about its end behavior. Uh, now, we cannot talk about this function as x values approach negative infinity because our x values can't approach negative infinity. Negative infinity is not part of our domain. So we can talk about it as we approach 0, the left side of our domain, and as we approach positive infinity, the right side of our domain. So as we're going towards 0, as our x values are going towards 0 here, our y values are going down towards negative infinity. Yeah, I've got quite a few in this one. All right, thank you, you too. As we approach positive infinity, as our x values are going to the right, 
our Y values that don't really look like it, but they do continue to increase, so our Y values are also going towards positive infinity. They are continuing to increase, however slowly that may be. All right, so we are going to look at some operations that we can do with logarithmic functions because they are somewhat helpful to us um, with solving some equations and things like that. So that's our goal for today. Um, let's talk about what does it mean to be a logarithmic function? What, what on earth does that even mean? So we haven't talked about inverses yet, but uh, the fact is the inverse of the exponential function is the logarithmic function. So what that means to us is that when our x value is greater than zero, which we just talked about, x has to be greater than zero, and a is greater than zero, notice there's this little subscript here. We call that the base. So as long as the base is positive and it's not equal to one, then we have this relationship. Y is equal to log is a of x if and only if x is equal to a to the y. So we have this relationship um, between these two things. Uh, I call it the swoop. When I'm looking at the logarithmic form, the way that I read that, you start with the base, you go around your equal sign, and you end up back in the logarithm. So that's how you figure out that relationship. A to the Y is equal to X. You start with the base, go around the equal sign, and end up back in the logarithm. And that's where this relationship of a to the y is equal to x comes from. Um, and we'll talk about the ln later on tomorrow, uh, tomorrow or Thursday one. Um, so we're not going to worry about that part yet. But uh, you do need to know the log base a of x. That's how you do that right there. So what does this mean? Okay. If we're told, if we're asked, what is log base 2 of 8, the answer to that is 3, and the reason is because 2 raised to the third power is equal to 8. Okay, 2 raised to the third power is equal to 8, um, so that's why log base 2 of 8 is equal to 3. Okay, so let's, let's convert between exponential form to logarithmic form. Okay, let's convert from exponential form to logarithmic form. So um, all of these equations here are true. 81 to the 1 half power is 9. So let's express that in logarithmic form. So the way that we're going to write it, the base of the exponential is the base of the logarithm. So 81 is going to be your little subscript there. And then pretty much what, it, what happens is the other two numbers, the exponent and what's on the other side of the equal sign, they switch places. So now 9 is going to be on the same side of the equal sign as the 81, and 1 half is going to be on the opposite side. Okay, so the base of the exponential is the base of our logarithm, and the other two numbers switch places. That's all there is to writing an exponential in logarithmic form. Okay? Um, and you can check it. You can do the little swoop. 81 to the 1 half is equal to 9. You should end up with what you started with. Okay? So if we're going to express 8 squared is equal to 64 in logarithmic form, the base is 8, the base is the same, the base of the exponent is the base of the logarithm, and the other two numbers switch places. So log base 8 of 64 is equal to 2 because 8 squared is equal to 64. <clears throat> 16 to the 0 power is 1. If you did not know that, that anything raised to the 0 power is 1, that's something you need to learn. Okay, Any number to the 0 power is 1. So we end up with this relationship right here, log base 16 of 1 is equal to 0. That's another property. So over here to the side, I want you to write these two properties. a to the 0 is 1. a is any constant. Okay, 
and then you also need to write that log base a of 1 is equal to 0. Again, a is any number. Anytime you see the log of 1, regardless of what the base is, the answer is automatically 0. You see log of 1, the answer is automatically 0. Last one, we're going to look at 18 to the negative second is 1 over 324. So we need to write that log base 18 of 1 over 324 is equal to negative 2. Okay. So the answer can be negative, but we cannot plug a negative number into the log number. But we can give a negative number as the answer. Okay, so um, I want to 